Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and it's time for many people's favorite segment. Um, this one's built quite a big following and fan base, and this is my client Emma's vlogs. We're up to week 29 of her vlogs. This is a lot of consistency. Uh, so, for those curious, that was an incline bench PR for her. She got 111 pounds. It was a one pound PR, right? Not too grindy. So, our week, this week looks very similar to last week. Uh, I don't think there was any major changes on this one. Uh, I think we made the changes for this one for last week. So, her, her training is pretty simple. We do max and max effort lift for ME day, uh, pause bench. She's doing wide grip pull-ups now, incline bench, and then tricep press downs. Again, people will notice there's always a bias towards triceps for my people who really care about being strong. All right, I'll let people who care a little bit about their arms do some bicep work and stuff. But chin-ups and pull-ups for most of my lifters will handle their biceps. And if we're going to do extra arm work, we're going to do triceps, right? Because that's what helps our actual pressing. Uh, she's getting pretty strong with these wide grip pull-ups, and I know she's cheating on some of the final reps. But, you know, there's a point where I don't care. The vast majority of women who train can't even do one of those. So we're in a good place. Plus, I mean, we've seen her do like 11 chins. And I noticed this week she whooshed down on her uh, cut. She dropped a pound and a half. The scale finally whooshed a little. She looks a lot leaner, right? I think people who follow these vlogs week to week realize she definitely looks leaner this week. And we talked about it and we decided, look, she dropped to 140. We're going to cap it at 138. That's as low as we can afford for her to go before it starts affecting her hormone levels and stuff. Right. So she's gotten pretty lean. You know, she's got visible abs again. She's got a very small waist. Uh, she's cut about 10 pounds. Right. We bulked for almost a year. She's cut 10 pounds. She is now bigger and leaner, I think, than when she started this bulk. And as someone who has done, you know, like bodybuilding before, she even agreed, yeah, I don't, I don't want to go that low. And, you know, again, we talked about it, and we, we're on the same page here completely. Uh, and, you know, I, and I don't want for a healthy young woman her hormone levels to tank and everything. Not good. So for her max effort, she did a box squat with mini bands, with 30-pound row bands. Uh, I don't remember off memory as I'm doing this what her weight was like I did the incline, but it was a small PR, which we'll take when we're cutting. Right, we'll take it. So what's her supplemental work look like? Now we've gone, we've got a good mornings back. And, you know, I just had someone ask me in a live stream, I don't see a lot of your clients doing good mornings. Plenty of them do. Just not all of them. We do good mornings for her. And, you know, the people who wonder about it, I tend to do more good mornings for lifters who do box squats. Right, because there is a synergy between the two. So we're back to the cambered bar good mornings. We cut her RDLs out. Uh, she's doing split squats. And when she does them, you know, at home, we do we do the safety bar when they're on vacations and stuff. I'll let her do them with dumbbells to get some variation. Uh, you know, some people ask, you know, why the split squat? Uh, there's no, there's very little load on the lower back. It works the same lower body muscles as a squat. We get it isometric or isolaterally. So we know loading is very similar left to right. And it unloads the back. Now, could we get a very similar response to that with just a wide stance belt squat? Sure. I think they're pretty comparable. But they don't have a belt squat. Uh, Louie talked about getting one, though, so they might get one. Of course, since she's doing her leg raises, there's definitely a little bit more cheating here than we might normally want. But the fact that she can do them at all, I'm happy. You know, and that's what people forget with some of this. With cheating and strictness, a lot of it's just an issue of tracking. If you're swinging a little bit and you end up getting a few more reps as a result, your, our total overload ends up being very similar. It ends up being very similar. So it's not a big deal, but ideally we'd like to see some stuff more strict. But she keeps getting stronger and leaner and more jacked. Okay, she's got good big three numbers. So, you know, if we're going to look at this, she's got what most women, a lot of women would consider to be an ideal physique. A lot of the women who follow really are impressed, you know, with where she is as a, a drug-free lifter. All right, they're very impressed. So she's got a great physique. She's got good power lifting numbers. Like I could put her on a platform right now and she'd do well. 
she'd do well. I could run the numbers. I almost I to see where she would rank, but she could go to nationals. I am almost certain she'd qualify for nationals with her current numbers, no problem. So from that perspective, you know, you have to look at it and go, well, does it matter? She's cheating a little on her pull-ups and leg raises. Probably not. I mean, I would like them a little stricter, but it's not the end of the world. You know, and I get people who will come in the comments and they'll be like, oh, it doesn't count. Like, what do you mean it doesn't count? Are you saying she didn't get hypertrophy from it? Now, if we're doing it as a strength test, like of how many strict pull-ups you can do, okay, I, I would agree. But these are not movements that we're doing as a strength test, right? That's why we squat, bench, and deadlift. Okay, these are movements that we test strength on. Everything else is a builder, right? Strength testers and strength builders, right? We do these movements to build muscle mass. And if anyone thinks that a little bit of, of cheating interferes with muscle mass, they've clearly never watched any pro bodybuilders train. They have the worst form and partial reps and cheating of anyone you'll ever see. And I'm, again, keeping in mind there's drugs and stuff involved, but still, you guys get the idea. Uh, speed day, she did box squats with bands and we did sumo deadlifts against bands for speed pulls. And we rotate through that stuff. I rotate bars and I rotate sumo and conventional for her is we don't have bands and chains to rotate. You know, and that's kind of the minimum. I get people who, who ask me, hey, you know, uh, do we need accommodating resistance run conjugate? It'd be a good idea. Like if you don't at least have bands and stuff, I don't know that conjugate's the best system for you to run. There's a minimum equipment buy-in. And that's kind of my point. I like conjugate for a lot of my lifters. I don't think it's the best for me psychologically, but I did still did well on it. I got to big numbers, you know, but there's a, an equipment buy-in. And no, I think if you can't do speed work correctly and you don't have bands or chains at all for speed work, I don't know that I would recommend conjugate for you. But when you're in this situation where she is, they've got band pegs on their deadlift platform. They have multiple bars. They've got a reverse hyper. They can, she can do bands on everything, you know, Kanji gets perfectly reasonable, and it's gotten her damn strong. And like I said, then she finishes up here with her reverse hypers, which you guys know how I feel about. One of my favorite movements, uh, and I prescribe it to a lot of my lifters. I've got a lot of my lifters I've convinced to buy reverse hypers. You guys see it in the vlogs. Almost all of my people with a home gym either have a glute ham raiser or a reverse hyper. Very few exceptions. There's a good reason for that. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.